Hey guys, have you guys been waiting for a declarative, easy to use, immutable Linux distro to finally be revealed? Well, we're going to do that today, right after this intro. Well guys, before we start today's video, I need to take a moment and do that YouTuber thing and ask you to smash a couple buttons down below. You know the ones. Go ahead and do it. All right, so let's go ahead and take a dive and into this and take a look at which distro it is that we're talking about because I tell you what, it's so easy. Even an old guy like this can do it. So here you go. We have Blend OS. This distribution is so easy. It's 100% immutable, but it's also declarative. This new version 4.0 has introduced that process, which if you've ever used a declarative immutable distribution that you might be quite aware of would be uh, Nix OS. However, though, with Nix OS, you've got to know a completely different, like it's Nix OS programming language, whereas this one's done in C and it's so easy to do. Before we get into the nitty gritty of it, uh, I would like to take a moment to just to show you the web page because you're going to refer to this web page for some documentation stuff. Uh, you will find it at blendos.co. I will have the link in the description down below. The most important features to know are at the top in this title bar installation right here, which you could run this on a T2 Mac. It even supports that. And you can do normal PC, which will guide you through the requirements as well as how to flash it to your USB drive and, you know, walk you through some of the stuff on running the installer. So take a moment to read this, familiarize yourself with it, and make sure that you pay attention to any caveats that may be pertinent specific to your hardware that you're trying to install this on. And then another thing I wanted to show you is right here, post installation introduction to blend OS. This little section will teach you about the system YAML file, which is going to be ever so important to this because that is where this system becomes declarative. You will edit it here to set whatever declarations you want in your configuration. So it's kind of like the Nix OS configurations you know for your packages and stuff like that so it's kind of like that configure uh, uh configuration dot next that your configuration file so that is a look at that section then of course they have container management because just like a lot of other mutable distros the way that they are beating like you know with aurora and uh bluefin and bazite i believe the way they're beating the ability to install applications that you may need is through the use of docker and docker management tools like podman and that which is what this system uses they use it they use docker and i believe they use podman but they have this system settings here for creating your containers kind of like box buddy that you'll find in aurora in the universal blue ecosystem so this is a this is a game changer for for OS's that are going they're becoming immutable I really think that it's awesome that they're coming up with these ways of people to be able to install their applications that they need right off the bat another thing that has been enabled in this is flat packs so that is the other way that a lot of people are using their ecosystem to get the latest and greatest of the versions of applications that they need that work seamlessly in your immutable distribution because it doesn't write to any place in the system file like you would traditionally get in your standard linux distributions where they're going to write to the etsy folder and you know the the var folder and those kind of folders that are your core system files that are just not writable because that's what the immutability of the distribution negates so that being said this is just a very well thought of distribution and put together, but this one is so easy because of the configuration file. This one to me is the greatest and easiest immutable declarative distribution that you can get into that is just well worth taking a look at. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the desktop. And if you haven't used KDE before, well, it's kind of very Windows-esque, and uh, by the sense that it has a 
panel at the bottom that has your launcher, pin tasks, and of course a notification area down on the right hand side with your date and time. The launcher looks almost like Windows 10 when you used to launch it. It looks very similar to that, so you have no problem navigating around it. And of course, your pin tasks are right here next to it. And of course, your session uh, is over here with your system tray, uh, which uh, the calendar is a non-interactive calendar, just a calendar. And then in your notification section here, uh, you have notifications, vaults, you can adjust brightness, color, disks and devices will show up, display configuration and power management as well. So that is a brief look at that. Now, when we're looking at just briefly, you can see that the, the applications are each categorized. You can feel free to dive into these and take a look at them more in depth as you will. But I'll kind of go over just a couple of ones like uh, in development, you got Kate, which is a uh, text editor. That's something to know. And graphics, of course, nothing there. As far as Internet's concerned, obviously, as you can see, there's no web browser. And we're going to address that. I'm going to show you how to install a web browser in this using the packages, how to add it and configure it in your system file, declaring what packages you want. Then under multimedia, of course, they've got VLC installed and a couple other ones. Uh, under office, nothing there to note. Under settings, you just got your regular system settings, which are your KDE settings. When you click on that, it brings you to the standard KDE settings. So there's nothing to really be mentioned about that other than you could adjust all your personalization for wallpapers, you know, desktops, everything through here. In system, of course, we have to mention, ooh, note of mention in there is uh, you got your image writer in here. So if you want to write a USB, a bootable USB drive, you can do that through here. You've got Discover as well, which is the uh, software center, much like you would the um, Play, Play Store uh, for Android, the Microsoft Store, uh, the App Center for Macintosh or Apple, and then... Um, you know, like your software center for Ubuntu, if you've been on Ubuntu, well, discovers the one for KDE. That's something that all things seem to come with and is proficient in. So then you've got your partitioner here, and then you got console, which is your uh, terminal emulator. And then, of course, you've got your menu, your system monitor, Yakwake, which is a drop down terminal emulator. Under utilities, of course, this has got all the, like some, some of these, like Kate, you'll find in the development but you also find here also they got calm which is something new that is in the that i've never seen before but it seems it starts with a k which is the kde suite of tools that, that kde comes with so it's a breathing technique i guess tool and then you've got keysmith which is your qtp tokens and two-factor authentication program 2fa you got like a KT time, K timer, software token, weather, uh, sweeper, which is a system clearer. It's a nice little tool. And of course, the welcome center, which is what boots up on launch anyhow. So let us go ahead and take a look at the system settings for Blend OS. This is the tool, remember, that you're going to have to use to set up a Linux container which is basically Docker with, you know, Podman in the background managing it. This is a, a graphical front end that ties into Podman. Whenever you go to do anything, as soon as you boot in, the very first thing, in fact, let's close this, we'll come back to it, uh, that you need to do is you need to fire up your emulator, your terminal emulator, right, which is going to be console, and then you need to type in sudo... Akshara. And then update. And then you give it your password. And then it's going to do a system update. This you have to do because anything you do will create an error on here until you do the system update. I got to let it go do its thing, and then I'll come back because I needed to show you that. This is a very important command that you're going to use a lot. Okay, that didn't take too long. Now, one thing I will point out, as with uh, several other mutable distros, 
when you're downloading a truly mutable distro, you're downloading an image online, even when you're doing updates. So this will take a little bit longer than your most native Linux updates that you would perform because it is downloading an image and then unzipping it and untarring it in the background for anything that's new. So it's unlocking things, it's locking things back up, doing all those good things. So that's done. And that's how you use the Akshara command to implement any changes that you might have made or will be, you know, doing an update for your system update. Let's go take a look at that system tool that they've included because it is a pretty dope little tool that allows you to install Linux containers. If you can see here, you got three tabs. You've got Linux containers, you've got Android apps, and you've got system updates. That being said, your system updates is just that. It's gonna do the Akshara update command, but it's done through this graphical interface, run the script in the background, there you go. But you don't get any output in your terminal, so you don't get to see what it does android apps it's got wadroid installed as well as flatpak installed in here so there's already that support so if you already know what flat packs are all you do is run your flat pack install flat pack search flat pack remove command for said application and you're good to go now as far as your linux containers are concerned this is where the docker and podman come into play this is going to be a front end for podman for being able to manage your docker containers when you create the container it downloads it and then it manages it through here so let's go ahead and show you really quickly how to do one so we're going to do one that's going to be pac-man oh <laughs> i cannot type pac-man it's going to be an arch linux container and we are going to uh go ahead and create the well you know what we could also associate a binary to the container so let's try something like obs studio and the container name is going to be pac-man so we're going to add that and then we're going to add this container and now as you can see it's trying to pull its stuff down it's going to pull down the docker image and it's going to create this container it's going to take a minute so i'm going to go ahead and pause the video once it's finished we will resume well i cannot create a container on here because somehow in my wonderful infinite wisdom of doing so many reviews i forgot to do something when i set this up in my virtual machine and that was to assign it a large disk space amount i left the default of i think it's 20 gigabytes or whatever and i ran out of disk space to create the container but that is exactly the step that you would take to create a container and associate a binary package to it so that that way you can open up obs and it'll open up in the docker container unfortunately i ran out of disk space i'm so sorry so that is a look at this system tool the other thing that i want to show you that is the most caveat part and this is what makes this so declarative is the actual tool that makes it so easy to configure unlike nix configuration tool uh nix configuration file in nix os which is another mutable distribution that everybody's just in love with I am a fan of these immutable distributions and i find them extremely useful and as they've matured become very 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 easy easily to configure that being said the way you find this is you go to your hard drive and you basically go right here it's in your root folder system yaml and so you just simply open it with your with your text editor as kate here on kde we're going to maximize this so you can see it and see if we could increase the actual text size for you okay so we're gonna hit increase oops my bad now that should make it so you can read it nice and big so as you can see here the first line is the impl i believe that's the implementation of the actual repo that you want to draw from in this, which is gonna be the github.com blend OS tracks raw main. Then the repo, oh, sorry, yeah, the actual URL where you're gonna be pulling from. And then the repo is the 
HTTPS package repo blend OS.co and track. Now this is what they call a track is basically your desktop environment. As you can see, it's plasma that's written here. Now say you want to do a package. Now this is where that documentation on blend is, is important because there's a section in there on how to manage this. And let's go take a look at that. Silly me. I forgot. I need to install Firefox. So let's go ahead and do that. To install a packages, which this documentation will be in the documentation that I'll show you once I get to it through the internet. Uh, you simply add, this is where you declare it, a line, and you're just going to make a section called packages. And then you are going to hit enter. And then you're going to indent in, tab in to right about there. Wait, I see a mistake that I made. So we're going to go here to packages and we're going to do a colon after that. And then see how it turned purple. So now we know that we're correct. So now we hit enter. We're going to indent to there. We're going to put a dash and then the uppercase, not uh, quotes, but the single quote quote whatever you want to call it and then you're going to want to type in whatever your package is which we're going to call firefox then we're going to do the same with that little closed tick afterwards and then that should be it so now we're going to want to save this and we're going to give our super secret password and then when it's closed and all we're going to do is we're going to launch our terminal and we're going to type the axara update command because that's your basically rebuild for like nix os or your rebase for you know your universal blue and this one is going to be the xara i don't know what xara means but we're going to run it i'm going to give her a password and when it's done doing that we will do what we need to do to reboot now this would be a way of doing it layered from installing it from the actual repos the other option could have been the flat pack okay well it finished and closed the window so now let's go see let's go ahead and close this window and see if we have a flat pack installed so now what we're going to do is we're going to close this and then we're going to go here and then we're going to go to oh look we got firefox right here it installed it right down there on the bottom panel and it's right there look at that so now we've got it installed so now we launch it and there we go. And so that is how you can install Firefox via the actual layered version. So that is a look in quick, brief way at Blend OS, which is a magnificently done it's version four, so it's got plenty of room to grow. So bear with them, but it's 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 polishing up really really nice. It uses the Jade installer, by the way, and it removes it after you do the install. If you want, leave a comment down below, and I could do a walkthrough on the actual install so that you can see exactly how to install. If you do decide to try it, and guys, tell me what you think. Am I correct in my title saying that this is a very easy to use, easy to understand that even this old guy can get it? Type immutable distro. Hey, until the next one. Y'all keep doing what you do. Keep on Linuxing. Stay safe, stay blessed. And above all, I'll see you in the very next one. Peace.